Hi, my name is Jenny Martin. I'm part of the 14th cohort of the Data School at the Information Lab and also one of the doctor preppers for Prep and Data. Today I'm going to be talking about using the profile pane in Tableau Prep. It's a great way to be able to see your data and investigate the underlying distributions. Often when I'm going to make a dashboard in Tableau Desktop, I'll first bring the data into Tableau Prep just to use the profile pane and you know get a handle on how my data is structured because to me it's just a lot more visual and easy to find that out in Tableau Prep. So let's um, have a look at it and see why I love it so much. So we're using the Sample Superstore data set, which is, you may be familiar with, from Tableau Desktop. And we've just add a clean step after the input step. So um, you may notice straight away, down at the very bottom of the screen, we have a table here of the data and it looks quite familiar, quite similar to how Tableau Desktop would display this data. But then above that, we have each field and a little kind of distribution going on. So um, whether it's a numeric field, um, a string field or a date field, we've got some kind of bar charts going on. But we'll come to that in a second. The first thing that I always do personally when I bring in a new data set is take a look in this top corner here where it tells me the number of rows and the number of fields that we have. So we have 21 fields in this data set and we have 10,000 rows. Well, do we actually have 10,000 rows? If we hover over, then we get a more exact figure of 9,994 rows, which is really useful just to be able to get that detail if we need it. So. Um, let's take a look at our values down here. So as I mentioned, we have a numeric field, a string field, and a date field. And you can see that everything in the string field is split out into its own row, every unique value, of which there are 5,009 unique values, unique order IDs. So that's always really useful to have a look at um, how many unique values you're working with. But for our row IDs, we kind of have them bucketed up or put into bins. So personally, I think that's a good sort of overview to have as it's on the summary at the moment. But I prefer usually to switch this to be um, a detailed look at the data. So we have one unique value for each uh, row. So um, the reason for that is because if we just have a quick glance at it in the summary state, we know that there's not quite exactly 10,000 rows, but it really looks like it because uh, this bottom uh, bar isn't really that much smaller than the bar above it. Um, so I just prefer to expand that out uh, so that we have our detailed and we can see that our minimum value is one and we can easily scroll down to our maximum value, which is 9,994. And this bar chart at the side is doing a great job of showing us that we have exactly one row per row ID. So there aren't any duplicated rows in our data set. And that's great to know just at a glance without having to do any further investigation to it. So that's kind of numeric fields. If we take a look at string fields, as I mentioned, the unique values is so useful. Um, and then we can see that we still got this bar chart um, for the different values. And we can quickly just kind of uh, go to the higher values if we want by just clicking here to kind of find that, okay, this order had five products in it. That's one of the highest product um, orders. Um, it's sorted by, uh, alphabetical order but you can change it to be you know sorting by count or sorting uh, in the other direction if you want to as well so that's a really cool uh, additional way also if you know that there's a specific order id that you want to search for um, then you can definitely do that as well you know searching it with the contains you know quite advanced uh, searches that you can be done that you can do to find the values that you want and the benefit of doing that is if I click, for example, on this um, order ID here, then you can see that there's a little blue um, line that comes up here to suggest where the order ID is. We can see that if I hover over the order date here, that it, the order took place in 2019 from the order ID, we can confirm that that's true. But if we want a more exact date, then we can split this out into its detail view as well. Make sure we re-click on that. Um, so that we can find the date and click to it 
and then we are we have that it's the 3rd of November that that order ID was and we can see it was second class for example if we just scroll along we can see the little blue highlighting um, it also in that highlight is telling us that five of those rows referring to the order ID that we have clicked on are second class so it's kind of giving us the overall number of rows and also the highlighted um, number of rows too so we get a lot of detail from that tool tip too so there's really a lot of things a lot of investigating that you can do with this it might be even clearer if I clicked on say standard class which is the most common shipping you can see all of the customer IDs all of the customers all of the segments that are using that standard class ship mode so you can sort of see the proportion of the data that is uh, represented by that ship mode so there's a lot of exploring that you can do I could stay and explore it all day um, but I shan't don't worry the only other thing that I wanted to point out to you which took me a while to discover is that you can change if you don't like the profile pane you can hide it um, I'm not sure why you would um, but then you can also just have the metadata and that can be really useful after joins when you have those two columns that are kind of your joining clause you might have them duplicated in your data after the join and it might help you to identify them if you've got a lot of fields to have just the metadata here so that you can just for example delete a column like this so thank you very much for watching this video please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel check out our previous video which is on wildcard union and stick around for our next video which is going into a bit more detail about the changes pane in tableau prep so thank you very much for watching